are in a state of emergency. Prejudice. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. folks are going to get reparations, then they're going to need a four-star general's approach to it. It will have to be approached in a organized, sustained, military-like way. A flamethrower of a man will have to be the keynote speaker concerning reparations. Brother Malcolm would have been the perfect man to go into the United Nations to pressure the power structure to give us reparations. But he's no longer with us and his brothers who helped stop him haven't picked up the tab. They weren't serious. If reparations is going to be addressed, then a serious individual like this brother named Talik Ibn Rod should be sent to the UN to speak before the General Assembly. Talik has the qualifications to be taken serious. He's been consistent in his seriousness. He's a man that's not going to go into the UN and bite his tongue. He's going to express how he really feels. He won't modify his delivery. He won't flip the script, buck, bow, smile, and beguile. He'll let the power structure know how black people really feel and why they need restoration for the mental and spiritual destruction done to all of us. Go get him. Wake him up in the middle of the night and bring him to New York. He'll come in a clean but wrinkled undershirt with a loose-fitting collar. He might come in a robe, maybe in a suit. He might drive a truck to the U.N. But you can rest assured, Talik will be coming as himself. And once the world hears him, the fight for what black folks need will be over. It doesn't matter if Talik is the opening or the keynote speaker. All you have to do is hear him and you'll be hooked. What? Meet you at the old Autobahn so we can rally up and organize the people? Haven't you heard that place is always closed? The old ones in the power structure vowed that they would never again give the people that kind of space to assemble. They are scared of Malcolm's ghosts now returning to the crime scene. That's why that place is always closed. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. We are in a state of emergency. Prejudice. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go.
Peace for and knowledge. knowledge. I'm so sister J. I'm so sister D. And I just wanted to say thank you for all the people who helped to the medical fundraiser for my uncle Tariq. And it has been so much to us that you would help because without you guys, his life would not be possible and we would not be with him today right now. And I just wanted to say for all of you that helped and that donated, I would really would like to give a big thanks. And I hope that I can meet you one day and say thank you in person. I love you guys and much. Okay, thank you for donating to uh, my uncle Tali. Uh, I appreciate it, and I know that my family appreciate it because he been on our lives for years now. So yeah, and I just want to say thank you because yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, and we love you guys. Bye. Bye. He's forever and always. He's forever and always. That's all I'm going to say. Alright. First of all, this video is inspired by Alberta Parish. She does not know I'm doing this. I ordered this book, God is on Trial. I ordered this book from Amazon. And I must say, I read it. It's very well written, very thought provoking. And she essentially talks about her experience being many, many years in Christianity, growing up in it, and things that she experienced and um, observed throughout her sojourn. And what she went through when she ultimately began to shake the God spell and began seeing the truth. And so sisters and brothers like Alberta Parrish, again, God is on trial. It is a provocative, thought-provoking, very real and honest point of view regarding the gods of major religions or of Abrahamic religions and why those of us who follow these belief systems should be asking the same kind of questions instead of just blindly accepting and following. We want to make sure that we're not just working to be first, but we're working to be right. A lot of times there are situations when things are just happening so fast. It's always important to be fast, but we always want to be right. So when we look at how do we move forward and not ask or beg for reparations, how do we take reparations? Well, the initiative of our organization, we have a plan. And we're going to be taking over cities in Mississippi. That's what we have here with Maurice Muhammad. He's ready to rock the house. So first, tell us about this. Mississippi campaign and what it, and, uh, the I'm sorry the Mississippi initiative and what that's all about and how it could benefit us and how did you come up with this? Oh, most definitely. Well, actually, um, when the idea first came up, uh, it was uh, Andrew Snub Nose who <laughs> sent me a, a, a letter and I read the letter um, and it was he was talking about taking over the state of Mississippi. 
Oh, most definitely. Well, actually, um, when the idea first came up, uh, it was uh, Andrew Snubnose who <laughs> sent me a, a, a letter. Oh, most definitely. Well, actually, um, when the idea first came up, uh, it was uh, Andrew Snubnose who <laughs> sent me a, a, a letter. Oh, most definitely. Well, actually, um, when the idea first came up, uh, it was uh, Andrew Snubnose who <laughs> sent me a, a, a letter. Oh, most definitely. Well, actually, um, when the idea first came up, uh, it was uh, Andrew Snubnose who <laughs> sent me a, a, a letter. We're coming. And see, we ain't going to beg because there's cities in Mississippi, and I can name one, uh, Mount Bayou, Mississippi. That's all black. Since the 1930s, the true identity of Master Farad Muhammad has been hidden from the believers who have joined the Nation of Islam and the public at large. The cover-up of W.D. Farad's identity started in the early 1930s when Robert Harris, a Fruit of Islam member, committed a horrible crime that led to Master Farad's arrest. As seen in this actual photo, Hundreds of Nation of Islam members stormed a Detroit courtroom demanding that Farad be released immediately. A riot broke out and several people, including police officers, were injured. The actual facts are, is that the Nation of Islam's founder, Master Farad, was ordered to leave the city of Detroit. And after he left, one of his students took over the organization. His name was Elijah Muhammad. To further conceal Farad's identity, an altered painting was created by an artist, and the painting bore no resemblance whatsoever to the real leader of the organization. When you see with your own eyes who's sitting next to Master Farad in this police station photo, this all new photograph that took us over 65 years to find, our advice, is for you to have a psychiatrist standing nearby to prevent you from going off the deep end. You see, it's easy to learn, but it's much more harder to unlearn. You see, Brother Malcolm learned the hard way that in the nation of Islam, brotherhood was nothing but a word. See this DVD before it's banned in America. I'm Derek Grayson, and our country is in a fight for its soul. I'll not only help Georgia, I'll help every American patriot in giving them a chance to live the American dream. right to vote. Please don't let it slip away. Don't let the few rule the many. Rock the vote!
Keeps it real like that. I keep it real. Let's get this party started, right? Let's get this party started quickly, right? <laughs> I wish, I don't have to wish, I need to take the time to improve my uh, video making skills. I really love how some people put their videos together uh, using uh, something simple as Windows Movie Maker or, or get some other type of software. I really love uh, Photoshop and all that type of good thing. I need to learn those type of skills. But in the meantime, I think I'm doing just fine. I, I, with the little skills I have, I, I still piss people off, people still don't like me, or whatever, uh, so it really doesn't make any difference. <laughs> the message gets through. I would just like, for my own personal self, I would like to acquire those type of skills. Uh, in the meantime, again, let's get this party started. I'm the Mighty One Angel Snubbed Up 7, and of course, this is uh, the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Right around the corner, December the 7th, 2020, I would hope as many of you that can join me for what I call Soul Liberation Day 2020, December 7th, 2000, I mean, I mean, oop, da, 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 da. Soul Liberation Day 2021, December 7th, 2020 at 4.30 p.m. More details as the date gets closer. Uh, that's one of the most important and biggest lectures or speeches or however you want to uh, view that in the year for this platform. 
So on that note, in this uh, case, you already saw uh, screenshots from the aftermath of a of a conversation on the board of Pan Africanists. These Pan African type folks. These blackity black type folks. So I want you, as we continue this conversation, actually, I could just post. <coughs> excuse me. I could just post bits and pieces of uh, what happened, and you can you can figure the whole thing out. But it sort of involves me, so I have to add a little commentary to show you where I sort of fit in this because I'm not on this panel. I'm not nowhere around, but I had. Uh, interactions with this person here on the screen and this other person called Jay that's on this panel and Jay is somebody uh, a friend or associate of uh, uh, this man that was that used to come on our platform called Cool Cool Cutter uh, Brother Gary so I want to show you how I fit which I really don't fit in uh, much but I want to show you where I stand in all this. It really doesn't need a whole lot of commentary. It speaks for itself. It, it shows these people have a mindset that is similar or they claim you know, the same type of mindset. And people like me, of course, they hate, they can't get along, things of this nature because I refuse to be an African. But, well, uh, Jay is a Pan-African. I'm an African, and this man here, I'm an African. Uh, he goes by the uh, YouTube name Guy Nollywood Jr., and he says that I'm slandering his name and speaking and talking about things that's not true. And here's an example, and they always bust themselves out. They always expose who they really are because they cannot even get along with themselves. Sooner or later, and it's also a case of men, these Pan-Africans and most of these people, they always tell you about all the books they read and the research. It's all, it's all egotistical. It's all about, I'm smarter than you. I'm, I'm bigger than you. I, I, I know more than you. I, I read more than you. I, I understand. I comprehend more than you. It's always a man trying to get over on another man. I'm bigger, I'm smarter, I'm greater. So, as you see in the chat room here, uh, well, if you such, meet me at my house, come and see me. You know, that type of thing. And this is the, one of the reasons why I continue to tell you that men or the male should not be on, uh, you should not follow and allow ourselves to be led by men because this is a clear case example that men don't have proper leadership skills. Men are the ones that are emotional. Men are the ones who are violent. They are profane. They are disgusting. Men are the ones who are the, are the destroyers. Because they have to prove to another man, I'm the head Negro in charge. So this J guy was more aggressive in his talk and he caused Guy Nollywood to back down off the panel and he went he slinked he slinked see that would be cowards why didn't you stay see this see this is what he got on my case about because I didn't want to deal with Jay's nonsense so I, I did not want to deal with it so I decided to leave the panel but he did the same thing with the same person. He slinked, went into the chat room. I didn't go into the chat room. I just left. He went into the chat room talking about meet me at my house. Well, you see the uh, the uh, screenshot. So I don't have to paraphrase anything. You can see for yourself. I am going to comment a little, little bit to show you where I fit in. But I... This is an example of the majority, not a not a minority, 
the majority of the mindset, especially among the men, and the women follow behind these men, they back them up because if you look at the chat, you will see that the one of the ladies, the only lady that was on the panel, she went to the side of of um, this guy, Nollywood guy, and uh, it's all messed up. They don't have the mindset to unite. Their mindset is confusion. Their mindset is violence. Their mindset is egotistical. They offer no plan. They offer no vision. They offer nothing that of, of substance that can do anything for us. It's the same thing over and over again. Feel good rhetoric. We might as well stay in church. They say, I don't have nothing to offer. Yes, I do. You've never tried it. I have a plan. The Mississippi campaign. I have a plan, purpose, vision, and goal. You never tried it. You keep one. You want to sell shoes and incense and open up a fried chicken stand and keep doing the same little itty bitty do nothing crap for yourself because it really is not doing nothing for the forty million plus. In order to change, really make a dent in the condition of the forty million plus, you must have a plan. You must be able to be united. You must be able to have one specific goal, one purpose, vision, plan in order to accomplish. Otherwise, you go nowhere. Otherwise, everything that's being that you're doing is, is personal. This is my business. These are my shoes. These are my eggs. This my my your own personal self. When we should be saying, This is ours. So when we take control of the state of Mississippi. This is what we've done. This is ours. It's not mine. It's not his. It's what we do. It's ours. So every soul brother and sister in this country can say, look what we've done. I was part of that. It's mine. And I will even put it on a piece of paper and give it to every, to every 40, to all the 40 million plus. You will get a document in your head and to say, this is part of, I am part of this. This is mine. This is not just, just yours, Negro. I got a piece of paper. I'm part of this. This is mine too. And whatever assets, whatever riches, whatever it is, everybody will have that piece of paper and you get your part, you get your percent. And it will be equal. I get 10%, you'll get the 10%. Whatever it is, on paper, a contract, this is mine. You can't do nothing in this corporation because I'm part of it. It's mine too. I'm part of the owner. All these businesses and schools and everybody, that's personal property. So whatever we do in Mississippi, whatever we build, this is ours. This is my school for real. You'll get it on paper. You have say so. No, you don't have the plan. You don't know what the hell you're doing. The only thing you're doing is spilling feel-good rhetoric just like the pastor, the preacher in the church. That's all. Hoping that you can get something right. Hoping you'll go to heaven. Hoping you'll see the hereafter. I don't have to hope to do nothing. I can make it real. With my ten fingers and my brain. So let us explore this real quick. It's negative. But it needs to be seen because it's out there. This is what you want to avoid. You avoid it because you don't want to be around this type of atmosphere. Nothing but talk. Nothing but egos flying. I, I, you know, I know more than you. Ain't nobody listening to nobody. Nobody learning from nobody. This is my opportunity to flex, show other men what I do. Sort of remind you on the farm when that rooster go out there and he fluff up his feathers and and bounce around because he want to show all the other males, I'm the one, I'm the boy. I'm the dominant. And that's what this all this stuff is about. It's not about liberation of the people. It's not what is in the best interest of the people. Because what is in the best interest of the people is unity. Is a plan. Is a goal. Is a purpose. Is vision. A vision for the future that you're not going to be able to live. They don't have none of this. They keep talking about what dead folks did. What Malcolm done. What Marcus Garvey did, Elijah Muhammad, and uh, uh, 
Magic Douglas or whatever, what dead folks done, and you have not even been able to replicate what these people done in their past. And you actually, we actually have things easier in 2020. This is the perfect time to do our thizzy. This is the perfect time, the perfect environment. Everything is ready. We have the talent, we have the money, the resources, everything that we need to take control of this state, take this poverty-stricken state, make it rich and wealthy because you have the ability to do it. Let's take over Alabama. Let's take over Georgia. Take control. We're not trying to take over the United States government. We're not a terror trying to be some type of terrorist organization. We're just expressing what should have been ours a long time ago. They don't want to give you reparations. Then you be smart enough to use the tools that your enemy give you and let's take it. And these Pan-Africans have no idea of that type of philosophy. So let's do this. You examine the chat. I really don't have too much to say. I mean, the... Uh, The screenshots speak for itself, but this brother J person, if I did not put some of the rest of the conversation, it would not be fair to him, and he should be shamed, and this guy, Nollywood guy, should be shamed, and this is not to say that brothers don't have disagreements, whatever, but this is a, a routine thing, threats and violence, come see me, I'll kick your ass, and blah, blah, blah. And in the conversation, a Christian brother stands up. I believe it was a Christian brother or, or one of those other African people. He was like, okay, that's cool, but if you want to beat me up, why don't we beat up the enemy first? Let's take out George Zimmerman. Let's, let's take out the enemy first. And then if you want to beat me up, then you can beat me up after we take care of the, the, the enemy. There are voices of reason. But you have so much so much trash like God Nollywood Jr. and this J guy. The only thing they want to do is flex their muscles. And when you look at this J guy, some of his profile. So uh, these persons are so ego driven. When you see the profile picture of this guy, not guy, this J person, you see him. He want, he want you to make sure how big his arms is. He's physically fit. And to, to show you, I, I'm physically fit. You don't want to mess with me. I got all these muscles. I'm strong. It's all a show. It's all about ego for these people. And he would tell you, I've been studying this stuff for 30 years. You've been studying wrong. You in the error. There's many people who have been doing something, believing something for a long, long time, and they are wrong. 30 years of in error. 30 years of being wrong. And see, that's another thing. We don't want to admit that we're wrong. We don't want to admit that we're in error, especially when we've done something all our life. We've been doing something for 30 years. you still wrong. All the books... And all the things that you've done, your studying the information and whatever, when it's all said and done, you still are in error. You still do not come to the correct and appropriate conclusion. Because if you came up with the correct and appropriate conclusion, then you have the information and they have the information that would change your condition. It don't even change your own individual condition, let alone the condition of the 40 million plus once called Negroes in America. So. On that note, I'm going to give continue to give a slight commentary where I fit in, and then, but I mean, I mean, the whole thing speaks for itself. This is a general mindset. Now, some of them don't go to this level, like the moderator here, this brother Bakari. He has the same mindset, but he just don't go to that level. Same type of mindset. He does not appreciate the fact that you don't want to be an African. They have no respect for people when you decide what you want to do for you and how you feel. It's all about what they want. I'm not an African, sir. 
So they get angry and mad. Yes, you are. No, don't you can't you can't tell me who and what I am. I never tell people when they come on my platform when when they, when they know me and I talk with them. I never tell them you're not a Christian, you're not a Muslim. That's what you want to be. You want to be a Hebrew Israelite. I don't teach them. I don't never tell people don't go listen to the Hebrew Israelites. Don't go listen to Mr. Farka. You never hear me talk like that. I present. What I need to present. And then you make up your, your own mind. I'm not going to force you to do nothing. Because if you for, when you force people. Try to force people. And try to convert people. That's not real anyway. That's not sincere. You, you, use, you use your selling skills. Trying to sell them something. And you use fear. Well if you don't believe in this. You're going to go to hell. Uh, something bad going to happen to you. If you don't believe in this. Blah blah blah. There's no, there's no need for that. There's no need for that. That's not sincere. So really the mass majority of these people in these, in these belief systems and in these groups, they're not sincere because they only trying to be righteous and holy. They only trying to do something because they want the, the reward. So I'm going to change my behavior. I really like being nasty and stupid and unrighteous and profound. I really like that doing that. I really like that behavior. But I want to go to heaven. I want some kind of reward. So I'm going to do this for the reward. Or I'm scared of the punishment. You're going to go to hell. And all hellfire is going to break out on you. And all this other nonsense. I say what I say. And do what I do. Because I love it. I want to, I want to exhibit a righteous behavior. What they call righteous behavior. Because it's good for me. Not because I'm going to heaven. Not because I'm going to get some kind of reward. Because it's good for me. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing and saying what I do because I'm scared to go to some some punishment, going to hell or whatever. No, I'm doing it. I'm saying and doing what I do simply because it's good for me and there's a benefit. No more, no less. And I'm loving it like McDonald's. I'm loving it. It's good for me. I don't struggle because it's part of me because I love it. I'm sincere. I'm loving it. I don't have to pray seven times a day. I don't have to talk about Jesus 24 hours a day. I don't have to talk about I'm blackity black, black, black 24 hours a day and my melanin in my skin and all this other nonsense to hype myself up because deep down inside, I really don't believe in all of it. I'm doing it because there's a programming. It's not real. So this is the reality of this temple. Either we're going to keep it real, we're going to do it real, or we're not going to do anything at all. Those who are fake and those who are phony, here's your man, that J guy and the people on this panel. You go and join them and be with them and be happily ever after in their delusions and their fantasy world. And their solutions, which they don't have none because they depended on some dead folks that can't do nothing for them. So on that note, again, the commentary speaks for itself. I will come in where I fit in and I don't really have to say anything except to defend myself. Which these people think that I don't have the right to do. I don't have the right to defend myself. This sucker and these other guys want to attack you and talk about you, whatever. I don't have the right to defend myself. Well, I'm going to defend myself whether you like it or not. And what make them even more upset is because I do a good damn job of doing it. And the reason why I can do a good job at doing it is because right is on my side. So no matter what that, all that made up phony stuff that you talk about, it's not going to fly because righteousness and what is right always going to su supersede and surpass that nonsense. People who know me, people who've been around me, even those, a lot of folks who don't even like me like that, they have told me, you know, I, I don't really agree with the stuff that you say and I disagree, blah, blah. But one thing I cannot say, they cannot say that I'm not sincere in that I want to help this people, the once called Negro, the descendants of slaves born in America, get out of this condition once and for all. That's for sure. And really, I don't care the solution or whatever, as long as it works, as long as it's working. The problem is the things that you're talking about, things that you're doing is not working. 
and it's on a small level, it's not taking us nowhere. I can't get with that program. We need something big or nothing at all. We need something where all the people can say, this is mine. Not you and your little business and these little tittle-tattle things that you do for your own personal self. So when you die or whatever, it goes to your family. It don't. None of it comes to me. None of it comes to the brother and sister around the corner. Nothing comes to the brother and sister that's homeless on the street. It all comes to you. The Mississippi campaign said it belongs to you. All the 40 million plus in this country. And if necessary, we'll give you a piece of paper. We'll show you sign a contract. But you got to be part of the work to earn it. It's not for free. And you should be proud to do the work to earn it because you're going to be successful. You're going to be so proud of yourself when you pull this off. It's incredible. People like this think small. People like this, I don't know, they're not going to take you nowhere. They think very small. They rigid in their thinking. They're not flexible in their thinking. And they're not going to take us nowhere. It's thousands of these people. Thousands of them. They can't accomplish nothing. There's a reason for that. So let's get in this journey real quick. I've said enough. Really way more than I wanted to. Let me put these little bits and pieces of this video. Keep in mind the screenshots that you saw before. Let's put this together. And let us not be like these people. Let us. I don't care if it's 10 of us. Let us stay away from this type of thinking and this behavior because it's not going to get you nowhere. Okay, here we go. They're telling you, hey, if this dude ain't in, they're about to light everything up. He's telling you, hey, even if I don't win, I'm not leaving office. They are telling you, how do you not see what the fuck is happening? And how could you just be calm and say, hey, they're all the same. It's all just, it's all just go lucky stuff. We just don't know who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. You see who the fuck it is. It's 80 different militia groups, 80 of them. And that's not including the ones they don't know about. If you ready, if you ready to do something, then you have some feeling behind what the fuck you're saying. Excuse my slam, Bakari, but you would have some feeling. When I hear you without no feeling, I know where you're coming from. He can tell you probably, I mean, damn, you ain't even played a sport or nothing. You must don't, come on, man. You can tell a person that's ready. You can you can hear it and feel it in a person. You don't have no passion because you don't feel what you're saying. Really, it's because what I'm hearing from you is most of y'all is really deep down Republicans or Trump supporters. Now you're all playing the middle. I don't really know. I don't, I understand what you're saying. I understand that you're going to say, oh, there's uh, white people that's racist over here and white people that's racist over there. Yeah. There could be gangs all around you, but the one that's focused on you and talking about coming to get you is the one you need to be focused on. That's who you need to see. That's who you need to be ready to go to war with. And you need to have your mind set on that. You set your mind on your opposition. We shouldn't be trying to debate on where the, where the problem's coming from or what's it going to be. It should be on what we're going to do and how to do it. Teaching women to shoot, that's a great thing. I'm glad Brother Bacardi is doing that. That's, that's a great thing right there. Some of these cats ain't shooting nothing, though. Some of these dudes in here, I know ain't shooting nothing. They talking like they tough and saying someone's a coward. But they don't understand that I've already been in line with people that know you. So you can play those games if you want and talk like that if you want. But you are going to get yourself in some trouble. If you think the way I talk is just some fucking YouTube shit, you're going to find out. You need to watch your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Because just like they can get it, you can get it. Think about that. Be a man. If you're a man, you know that. And I say those things loud. I show my face. You know what I look like. My name is up there. People in here know my full name, all that. I don't care. I don't care. I could break you down with my bare hands or I could do it another way. Don't play with me. Watch yourself. I'm real with mine, and I'm telling y'all to be real. I wanted to come and us to focus and get it right because it's very important. I'm amped up because every day is getting closer and closer to something ugly. I know it's coming ugly. A lot of people in here is thinking it's something light, and we don't really know what's going to happen. No, stop thinking like that. You got to get that out your mind and get your mindset for war.
If your mind is set for war, you ain't going to sound indecisive like you're sounding. You're not going to be bringing up, oh, Barack Obama years ago did it. Why aren't people talking about it? Because it's 2020. That's gone. Who care about that? You care about right now. The people that supporting your boy are right wing extremists. If they both racist, OK, but the right wing extremists are coming. That's who we got to deal with. That ain't about being scared. That's about being prepared. Recognize the problem. Focus on how to handle it. We should be discussing how to go about handling it. All this. Oh, no, I'm just I have my emotions. This fake Marcus Garvey talking dude. Come on, man. Out of here with that. Marcus Garvey wouldn't be talking like that. Nothing that you say is something Marcus Garvey would be talking, man. You sissy soft with that, man. Get out of here. Matter of fact, man, you know what I'm saying? Dude, you you need to, man, you're not no help for us, man. You're old and decrepit, man. You ain't about that life, man. You ain't about that life. Now, after you get a chance to come behind me, I'm going to hear what you say. You better watch your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Because I will come see you personally, too. Now, my time is whoa, up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We can't even do this, man. Okay. This is time. Look, look, look. We don't do the disrespect and the threatening one another on here. Marcus Garvey, too, has been coming over here with me. That's a damn good brother. I know the things he do. Brother Guy, Sister Tiffany, I just met, have excellent energy. Look, I ain't choosing no sides, but I can I mean, look, man, I don't do that over here, man. All the threatening, talking about what we going to do and all that to one another. Our show is about how we going to protect one another. And it is going from protecting one another to you want to drop soup bones on your own brothers and sisters. No, man, we can't do that. that, that, that that's not what this was about. I, I accept your apology, but I hope you accept mine. I love you black folk more than breathing. So it's, you know, even those that are very passionate and, and that is uh, actually a, a cloak for cowardice. I'm not mad at you. I love black folk. And you know my history, Brother Bakari, in terms of being old, decrepit, and not fighting. You, I told you what happened to me. So I don't have to actually speak because others don't know my story. And they don't know what I've been through. So clearly, they're very either in, uninformed, unintelligent, or, again, a cloak for cowardice. I would rather anybody that feels that passionate about going and threaten one another do me a favor, and I'll even pay the privilege. Let's go together and find George Zimmerman and the killer of Sandra Bland and the killer of Trayvon Martin and Tamir Rice and definitely the one that just uh, murder charges dropped by Derek Chauvin. Let's get them first. And once we get them first, then you could come in and you could see me and do whatever you want to me. But I want to go against our enemy first because I think those passions directed to there would show the women, especially on the panel, that we really mean business about protecting them. Sorry for going ahead and, and, and front running. I, I didn't want to grab the mic from you, but Brother Bakari, but I just hope folks accept my apology because yeah, we, I love we, that we, Brother Jay, like wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, one second. And I want okay. to say this to Brother Jay. I don't want him to think that I'm leaving him out and trying to beat him up or nothing because he's a very smart brother. I understand his passion. You know what? When I hear Jay... I want to give a big thank you to um, Brother Bakari for having me on your show. Wanted to give a shout out to Sister Sister Courtney and Tiffany for coming on. It's good to hear sisters uh, joining with the brothers and vibing with the brothers and hearing their wisdom and knowledge. Marcus Garvey too, man, you 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 on point. I mean, I mean, your wisdom is is is, is fire. Um, Jay, I appreciate you too, brother. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I hope you have that same en energy when it comes down to when it, when it, when when. When, the, when that battle begins, you know what I mean? And um, shout out to uh, Brother Ben, you know what I mean, for coming on, hearing your wisdom and knowledge too. I, I appreciate all y'all brothers and the sisters, and sisters too. But I wanted to say this. Um, the reason why I keep bringing up Barack Obama, and I think a lot of people forgetting, that Joe Biden was vice president. Joe Biden was vice president. I think a lot of people forget forget about that. And when Bar when Barack Obama was president, black people got relaxed. They fell asleep. They didn't, there wasn't no, you know, militia. There wasn't no black militia out there. There wasn't. Everybody was on this, you know, you know. Um, there's no racism. You know, everybody's coming together. You know, and this is all that time for the eight damn years I've been hearing. And I've been arguing with black people. Same thing what Jay was doing. So I know his compassion. I understand where he's coming from. And while Barack Obama was blinding people, 
blinding our people, our people was getting killed by the same people, same militia, same, you know, white extremists, whether they're police officers or not. Same white extremists. And, and that's what I'm afraid of. I don't want, I want, I'd rather have somebody that I know that's telling me that they don't like me. At least I can, I know who my enemy is. But I'm sick and tired when every time a Democrat liberal gets in office, black people fall right back to sleep. And, 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 and then black people don't say black people, well, fight me. Fight me. So I don't need nobody telling me that I, I'm not out there, but I'm out there fighting. This is, this is, this is nothing new to me. So both parties. So why is it when I say both parties are the enemy? Why is it that, oh, I'm the enemy, but then that person don't say the black gangs who ain't doing shit, the bloods and these crips and these, you know, and all these other black gangs out there. Why don't you get mad at them? What are they doing? How come they not fighting the militia? How come, where, where they at? You got a lot of black gangs out here. Where they at? Joe Biden said once he gets in office, if he gets in office, he's going to give more special rights to the LGBTQ. To the point that he's going to force your little boy to become a girl. You won't be able to say a damn thing about it. That's a whole nother fucking war. You gonna? I don't need nobody telling. I don't need nobody telling me. Oh well, you got to watch. Oh, he's sitting this. No, 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 no. Both parties are the enemy. And we saw that on the Barack Obama and Bush and, and Joe Biden was vice president. And we got to keep that in mind. This man already have a plan that he's going to destroy our race. And we got to stop playing games, man. Stop playing games. This ain't no game. You know what I'm saying? All this. Oh, you know, like, no, go with, you got George Zinnemann. George Zinnemann, he, he sold his gun for almost a quarter million dollars. I don't hear no black people talking about that. I don't have one, one black person got mad at that. Or, you know, we, no, nothing. So just because, because some brothers have a little disagreement, oh, well, I'm going I'm to come see you. No, no, we ain't playing that shit, man. We ain't playing that. All I'm saying is both parties are the enemy. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking no sides. And just because a black person said, "Well, I'm, a, I'm a conservative," but that don't mean that he's a conservative to white folks. He's maybe a conservative to black folks. That has nothing to do with being a Republican or a liberal. I want to see, I want to see good things. I want to see more black couples to get married and 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 and, and live good, and and their children could become scientists and and engineers and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want my kids to be deprived of shit. You know what I'm saying? I want the, I want them to have the best too. So you know what I'm saying? So we got to stop playing games. Yes, it's going to be because I heard the left said if Trump wins again, they're going to they gonna go to war. They're going to go to war. I heard both sides. So ain't nobody safe. <laughs> so it's time to prepare. I've been preparing since Barack Obama was in office, dude. Okay? I've been preparing while Negroes fell asleep and told me, oh, Barack Obama is black. He's one of us. And he's doing a great job. He's bringing everybody together. Yeah, I'm still out there whooping, kicking ass, out there fighting. <clears throat> Come on, man. Stop playing, man. And I, and, and, um, but again, I yield the mic and I'm out. Thank you, Brother God. Yeah. All right. So I pretty much assessed the situation. And uh, what I'm realizing is that I'm in a group of right wing Trump uh, and Republicans. Or you're saying you used to be or you are. It seems like every single person in here beside myself. So I never claim to be Democrat or anything like that, but they have it in their mind because I don't agree with the white uh, supremacists that are about to do what they got to do to try to get the country back under control. Um, to address the old hag in here, there's an old raggedy thing up in here that's being very disrespectful. I would suggest that person check themselves, you know, because I never said nothing to her. 
And she need to check herself. Now, I know y'all might be okay with it and not say nothing about her. Now, when I come out of my mouth, you want to say that I'm not right or whatever. I didn't say nothing to this crow, but you see her coming out of her old wrinkly face. You, know? right, you can't talk about black women like that on my channel, man. Yeah, you better chill with that, B. Chill with that, man. Seriously. Uh, enough okay. is enough, Jay. Listen, man, guy, your time is up. Shut up. Okay, what do you want to say, Bakari? Man, yeah. fuck you, nigga. Fuck your mother. You fuck your grandmother, you? grandmother, nigga. What's up? Fuck your mother. Uh, All right. Fuck your you grandmother, nigga. What's up, nigga? Where you at? Where you at? You know what I'm about. Right, go ahead. Go, go ahead and say. It. I'm gonna find out where you at. Don't don't even worry about it. You please do. It. Please All do. Right. And your ass will be in the box. Do his, mic. do his mic, Bakari. Do his mic. And let you say what you're gonna say. You said don't disrespect anybody, but brother Bakari, you can see right inside. No, the shut up. You can see right in there that a person is keep uh, uh, addressing me, but you're not saying anything. Starting you're not saying anything. Really, this dude really you starting to piss me off, man. This dude, man, you got yeah, let me do his five minutes, minutes guy. Come on, man, he's starting to piss me off, man. Power, I'm not, I'm not playing that, man. You, man. This guy really get me pissed off, seriously, man. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you feel, bro. You want to call somebody an old nigga? You got gray hair. Yeah, I'm sorry, brother Bakar. I'm, I'm, I apologize, brother. But this dude really, he's off the chain, man. Stop! Don't be fooled by it. I'm out of here, man. I don't want. I'm not getting to this. I said, man, do something about that. I asked you to do something about that, and you just let it keep going. I said, please do something, because if you don't, I'm gonna speak on it. And she, didn't call, she, look, bro, she, she didn't call you out your name. You've been you called somebody old and decrepit. Now you calling somebody old hag and wrinkly. Man, you don't know how to talk to people without being disrespectful. When they disrespect me, that's how I return the favor. Except, but I don't try to sneak it in and hide it. I come straight and direct because I'm a real person that ain't scared of any kind of consequences of anything like that. So I would suggest, and, and it ain't like the person don't know. Y'all seen how I've been on here the whole time. I'm very consistent in my stance on myself. So yeah, I, I like you, man. But I'm gonna be honest, man. I can't I can't bring you back, man, because I don't do this on my channel. That's fine, man. We were going to talk about that anyway. I was going to get off because as a setup in here and I see that y'all. Uh, hey, I like you, man, but I'm going to be honest, man. I can't, I can't bring you back, man, because I don't do this on my channel. That's fine, man. We were going to talk about that anyway. I was going to get off because as a setup in here and I see that y'all. Uh, hey, I like you, man, but I'm going to be honest, man. I can't, I can't bring you back, man, because I don't do this on my channel. That's fine, man. We were going to talk about that anyway. I was going to get off because as a setup in here and I see that y'all. Uh, hey, I like you, man, but I'm going to be honest, man. I can't, I can't bring you back, man, because I don't do this on my channel. That's fine, man. We were going to talk about that anyway. I was going to get off because as a setup in here and I see that y'all. Uh, hey, I like you, man, but I'm going to be honest, man. I can't, I can't bring you back, man, because I don't do this on my channel. That's fine, man. We were going to talk about that anyway. I was going to get off because as a setup in here and I see that y'all. Uh, hey, I like you, man, but I'm going to be honest, man. I can't, I can't bring you back, man, because I don't do this on my channel. That's fine, man. We were going to talk about that anyway. I was going to get off because as a setup in here and I see that y'all. Uh, That's all, folks. That's all, folks. I mean, we have the uh, screenshots. We have a lot of the conversation. It really speaks for itself. And even though this guy Nollywood person is, is wacky, you see that his comrade, and that's his comrade. That's another Pan-African. That's another wacko Pan-African. You see that he's even crazier, insane, than God Nollywood Jr. is. Now, mind you, that God Nollywood Jr. just made a two-hour uh, video, and in the video, he said that this J person put me in check, and he has all the knowledge. So, since he has all this knowledge and all this wisdom, why don't you respect your brother with all this knowledge and, and wisdom and understanding? But no, you did the same thing that I did. You left the panel, sir. And there's a reason for that. Because of this man's behavior. Because of his, his ego. He's been studying for 30 some years. He's been doing the research. He's been getting the information. Just like you you done. And he's violent and nasty and profane. Disrespectful. And a wacko. Just like you are. So. Now the thing about this J guy. And we're going to bring this to conclusion. Is you can see that he's really, really into himself because of his 30-some years of study. But he talks about 
how brave he is. I'm a fighter. I stand on mine and all that. When we don't have to, when we don't have to stand on mine, it's easier to talk. It's easy to talk about somebody who don't have water and you have water. It's easy to talk when you have water. But when you take that water away from you, let's see how you talk. It's easy to talk about poor people when you're not poor. So he's doing all this bragging. Those type of people do not impress me. I was locked up. I was locked up for 10 years. I was locked up with rapists, pedophiles, murderers, you name it. I was there with them. I saw murderers. I saw people who killed more than one person or assaulted people. I seen them come into that place talking bad. I, I, I kill. I, I kill again. I kill you with my bare hands. You know, just they, they kill it. You don't want to mess with me. And next thing I know, they cry like a baby when they find out how much time they're getting. And when you're dealing with the Missouri Department of Mental Health, your, your time could be the rest of your life. And you see them start to cry when the realities, when the reality sit in that they may never see freedom again. So Jake talk all the, I stand on mine. I'm ready to fight. I do this. That's nothing but talk. Feel good rhetoric. You can say that because you, you don't have to do it. Show and prove. Show and prove. So he's not going to show and prove. You know, that's a bunch of feel good, feel good, uh, waiting for the return of Jesus rhetoric. That's all that it is. It don't, it don't impress me. And really, it don't it impress nobody because when it's all said and done, you have not proved that. You can say anything out of your mouth. The Holy Quran says, do not think that you shall believe and not be tried. He's talking all that crap, but he has not been tried. I've been, I've been locked up in the crazy house for 10 years with murderers and rapists and all the low lives of society. I survived. And not only that, but I got people trying to force medication on me and all this other stuff. I'm dealing with harassment, oppression every damn day for 10 years. I know what I will and will not do. I know what I can handle. I'm not running my mouth. You have not been tried. We don't know what you, you just talking a bunch of feel good rhetoric. We don't know what you going what, what you would do. Then somewhere in the conversation, this J person was, was mad, getting angry and upset. He said he didn't get enough time. Somebody was speaking over him or whatever. That's the same crap that he was doing to me. If you go back to my These People Are Banned video, you will see I'm trying to talk and this guy is so wacky. As I'm talking, he's he's fidgeting and jumping around on screen because he want to he's he want to cut me off so bad. I can't even talk. I cannot even concentrate on what I'm doing because I'm watching this idiot jumping back and forth like he's some kind of crackhead or something. Something mentally and there is something mentally wrong with all these people. They are brainwashed with this blackly black pan African garbage. It's delusional. It's poisonous. It gives these people a warped, distorted sense of reality. So two crazy people got together and this was the result. Now what if they was together in person? Now this might not even happen in person because the reality is Guy Nollywood is scary, scary, and this man is scary too. They don't want no confrontation like that. On the internet you can run your mouth, talk all this big crap because see, in real life, in real time, when you run your mouth, we know in the streets you're going to have to back up what you're talking about. So you have two injured and dead Pan-Africans, one in prison, one going to the morgue. That's black unity. That's Pan-Africanism. Thank you, brothers, for being the perfect example of what Pan-African is, because that's when it's all said and done, that's really what it's about anyway. It's not about liberating the people. It's about trying to get people to come to your slave plantation. 
That's what it's about. It's not about liberation of nobody. It's not about helping the oppressed. It's not even. It's not about proud to be black. It's about exactly what the result would be. One of these cats will be going to the morgue, and the other one will be going to the white man's prison to be there for life on death row. I suggest to us. We are in a state of emergency. Prejudice. Prejudice. Want a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. Operation Exodus Mississippi. What is OEM? It is the only real solution for descendants of slaves born in America. The original Mississippi campaign. Anything else is fraud and will not work. It is the process of bringing into reality the promised land that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke of. It is simply inspiring the so-called black residents of the state to take advantage of their voting power, having a large population to take control of the political systems, laws of their state, to benefit themselves, of which brings them power, power they never had before. OEM has nothing to do with religious, personal, or political beliefs, just wanting to make life less oppressive in this geographical area so blacks can feel safe and operate with less resistance due to racism, forming a type of safe haven sanctuary state for black people. OEM doesn't advocate trying to force the populace to do anything they don't wish to do, but offer advice and suggestions to improve their state for all citizens, regardless of race, creed, color, sexual orientation, etc. Some of the benefits of OEM could be, one, as a state, you could finally request reparations due to the enslavement of our ancestors from the federal government. Being such, monetary or other awards will not be going to individuals or groups, but a state now in control that benefits this people to help build what this people need to act like true, free, liberated, as well as equal citizens of this nation. Two, having control of the governor's mansion, you can control the state national guard as well as all law enforcement of the state. Three, create a different way of living among the people to alleviate homelessness and other poverty, requesting the citizens more modestly, opening up more jobs, more time with loved ones. Four, offer true rehabilitation to those in criminal systems so monies on jails can go to more beneficial purposes. Five, state can request the federal government to release all political prisoners in federal custody or those forced into asylum in foreign lands to be returned to or handed to Mississippi so they can live out the rest of their lives in dignity. Six, Mississippi will become a true work state where every man, woman, and child can say they had something to do with the success of their state instead of credit going to a select few. Seven, being an agriculture state already, we can specialize in the production of pure organic foods that is good for our citizens, also can be exported to other states and around the world, having a want for cheaper organically grown food products. Eight, success of OEM will become the blueprint and example, having not enough room for all who now wish to move. So our eyes must be set upon perhaps Alabama, Georgia, and the like. Nine, a state can function independently from the federal government forming relations and deals in foreign lands like Africa to benefit the state and nation. The so-called black people of America have never had true power that others respect. But by doing this, we will get the respect and power we have never experienced and the doors that will open due to just taking control of your life, we can't imagine. Please be reminded, if not for the domestic terrorism, targeting black people of the South and the federal government refusing to protect its citizens, forcing them to flee, this OEM campaign probably would have been made a reality generations ago. So all you and I will be doing is the work our ancestors wanted to do but couldn't do due to domestic violence from other citizens. Join and organize Operation Exodus Mississippi today or become a supporter.